Hi everyone! I am Dodivic Arma, a junior physical therapy student in the Philippines. And today, we will talk about orthosis education and training among geriatric patients. The first thing we need to do is to know our patient, including their name, age, occupation, what activities they'd like to perform, their ADL status, and their home environment. Who is the patient? We should always ask this question because we need to take into account our patient's biophysiological, cognitive, social, and other areas of learning needs. We need to evaluate their understanding before, during, and after the introduction of orthotic information and services. For example, if our patient does not speak English or local language well, we have a lot of options like asking for translator assistance from our phone services or maybe from the hospital or clinic. We can also use our internet Google Translate in our own laptops, or maybe we can draw pictures in order to show points on how to wear the orthosis and what are the different instructions for its proper use. But as physical therapists, we need to be careful about using other patients to be our translator because we may be violating HIPAA laws and regulations. Now, in order for us to assess our patient's learning readiness for orthotic use, we must determine first their level of strengths and skills through history and systems review, observing their gait, walking speed, and distance, measuring their joint ROM and muscle strength, assessing their balance, hand function, performing limb girth measurements, their level of community involvement, their cultural beliefs, their past experiences, and other stuff that may hinder their active participation in orthotic training. So today what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you a series of questions that are going to assess your overall health. So for each of these, I want you to answer with how you feel on most days and not just today. Okay? Okay. So first off, do you feel fatigued or tired? Yes. Yes. Okay. Without aids or assistance, are you able to walk up one flight of stairs? I hold on to the railing okay. as I can. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Without aids or assistance, are you able to walk about one block or 100 yards? Yes. Okay. Can you tell me what chronic illnesses you have? I have rheumatoid arthritis. Okay. And I have Raynaud's disease. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. And how much do you weigh right now? 159. Okay. In the last six months, how much weight have you lost? Uh, none. <laughs> okay. And so now for this next questionnaire. I'm going to ask you a series of questions about your daily activities. Your answer choices are going to be none, some, a lot, or unable. How much difficulty do you have lifting or carrying 10 pounds, which is about 2 gallons of milk or a large jug of detergent? Uh, some. Some, okay. And how much difficulty do you have walking across a room? None. Okay. How much difficulty do you have transferring from a chair or getting up out of a chair? Some. Some, okay. How much difficulty do you have climbing a flight of stairs? Some. Okay. And how many times have you fallen in the last year? Oh, three times, but okay. it was because my dog pulled me down. Okay. Okay, Patty, so I'm going to ask you some questions about your memory. Some of them are easier and some of them are harder, but just do your best. For the quest first question, I'm going to tell you the names of five objects, and I'll ask you to remember those objects. I'll repeat them back to me first, and then later on, I'll ask you to repeat them back to me again. Okay. Apple. Apple. Pen. Pen. Tie. Tie. House. House. Car. Car. Wonderful. The next thing we need to do is to develop learning objectives based on our patient needs. How can we facilitate learning in the presence of decreased short-term memory, visual and hearing changes, as well as motor and balance problems? Our learning objectives must address these needs such as the integration of multisensory approaches like visuals, models, demonstrations, and patient education materials to enhance short-term memory. 
We can also use strategies for effective instruction, such as clarifying misconceptions and, of course, bringing or presenting less materials in every PT session. And as for the visual and hearing changes, we can also set goals that are attainable by accommodating our patient, such as the use of black ink on a non-glare yellow paper for optimum acuity, or maybe we can also control background noises and adjust the pace of our speech with clear enunciation for patient with difficulty screening sounds. Then, we should begin with simple tasks that our patient can accomplish and then proceed to more complex tasks with or without the use of orthosis in order to effectively address motor changes. And the third thing we need to do is to plan and implement patient teaching. It should be done with adequate preparation and, of course, sessions in a quiet environment. And we must make it interactive and patient-centered, which means that education should be based on patient needs. For example, your patient has rheumatoid arthritis with MTP subluxation. In your assessment, patient complains pain on toes during weight-bearing activities, decreased single limb support, decreased MTP flexion, and an apropulsive gait. And your patient would need an external show modification such as rocker bar and, of course, a metatarsal pad. However, as physical therapists, we also need to educate our patient about safety and proper orthotic use. Patient must know how to perform with maximum safety in order to prevent falls, which may produce additional injuries. And the patient and the family must be made fully aware of the importance of this consideration. Patient must also learn a special skill in doning and doffing the orthosis for independence. Patient must learn proper skin inspection in order to regularly check for skin irritation and breakdowns caused by this orthosis because this may indicate adjustments secondary to improper fitting. On a daily basis, you may carry out the following assessment and foot care measures. First, check your feet daily for any cuts, wound. You can use a mirror to assist you to check the bottom of your foot. Second, wash your feet daily with soap and water and dry them thoroughly, especially between the toes. Third, apply foot moisturizer on a daily basis, taking care to avoid wound areas and the areas in between your toes. A good pair of shoes should have the following features. The front of your shoes should be flexible to assist you with your walking. The middle of your shoes should be rigid enough to give you maximum support in your arches. And most importantly, there should be external modifications like rocker bar and metatarsal pad to facilitate push-off in walking and decrease the pressure on the ball of your toes. Patient must also learn proper care and maintenance of orthosis by teaching him how to disinfect it using alcohol or water and soap in order to keep it away from bacteria. And then after that, we proceed to evaluation of patient learning. This is important to verify patient understanding of the instructions. And so we must promote active patient participation. We can do gait training with and without orthosis while maintaining close supervision to our patient and progressing from double limb support to single limb support in stable surface to unstable surface. We can also ask our patient to demonstrate proper doning and doffing, skin inspection, and proper orthotic care and maintenance in order for us to assess the extent of what he learned. And finally, we have to document patient teaching and learning. A written record of how the patient participated will facilitate communication among healthcare professionals who might handle the patient's case in the future. 
And that's it guys. Thank you so much for checking out this video. I hope you learned something today. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up for YouTube algorithm and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more videos like this.